All right, we're going to be switching gears with the best weapons series. So I've remade the SMGs, the ARs, and the shotguns now, and I say switching gears because generally I'd hold a vote and then go through all the weapons. But honestly, I'm feeling the traps this time, so we're just going to cover this real quick. And there are some actual major changes. Like, I honestly don't even remember if the anti-air trap existed in my previous video. It probably did, but that got changed. The gas trap got changed. Superchargers are a thing. The ceiling electric field can be energy now. We got some things to talk about, so let's get into it uh first and foremost let's just start with the ceiling electric field because that's what's on my screen this is oh man i want to talk about the best ceiling trap but it's kind of a complicated subject uh, i was a little fueled by a video chetic made a long time ago so this is a bit more of an angsty video i'm still gonna link it down below because i did some good testing and all of that and it basically came out to prove that the ceiling electric field the gas trap and the tire trap are all very balanced ceiling traps let me explain so first and foremost the ceiling electric field is honestly my default this is what I use all the time. Now that it can be energy, it actually does a pretty good amount of damage to, you know, every single type of zombie, no matter what element they are. I do highly recommend running nature on it if you are specifically running water missions, because a 130 nature ceiling electric field will actually do more damage to a water zombie than an energy 144, because the, uh, the superchargers only give you about a 15%, and the bonus from the correct element is basically a 25%. So even a supercharged 144 energy is going to do 10% less than a 130 nature. That's actually why I have this copy here and I have changed this around depending on the situation but that gets more into like a best perksy kind of video I just want to talk about the best traps and the gas trap it got changed in two major ways one it no longer does affliction does it really still show that oh my goodness they haven't updated the text in a long time yeah affliction damage is no longer a thing it will no longer tick away at the zombies health over time and it got a damage nerf however this trap is still far from useless because of things like the uh, the floor freeze trap we'll talk about that later but the ceiling drop trap lastly is very uh different as well so it's not going to be doing as much straight up damage as those other traps but if you can stack it you know two three tiles high it'll bounce up and down on enemies and deal extra damage over a little bit of time there it'll also uh, provide a huge impact knockback where it'll send zombies back down a hill it'll move them off to the side it'll stun them where they're standing to slow them down i use ceiling drop traps to actually beat twine endurance very easily in fact we didn't even plan on beating it it was an accident and so the ceiling drop traps ceiling electric field and ceiling gas trap are all very situational and if you know where to put them they are very useful in specific scenarios just to top off the ceiling traps pun intended the ceiling zapper is very very good for like eliminating really high level enemies in endurance i don't personally find use for this because i don't run endurance but it is a thing if you want to just pack a huge amount of punch all at once uh, i don't have much use for this in normal missions and if you're not an endurance player i actually can recommend skipping this trap as you will never miss it now i guess just to keep things in order let's move on to the wall traps the broad side is hands down the hardest hitting wall trap in the game uh, you definitely need to have a wall on the other side of it because it needs to have something to bounce against as long as you have that second wall at the maximum two tiles away maybe three if you've got a really big area but uh, a tile one tile away two tiles away having a wall to bounce against the broadside facing each other is even better it will just annihilate pretty much anything if you're ever trying to take out a trap vulnerable mini boss just go up to the mini boss just build a trade box at a broadside and you're gonna knock it out very quickly uh, honorable mentions are of course the wall dynamo and wall darts and by honorable mentions I mean the only other two uh, <laughs> wall traps in the game they're both very good you can stack these together with half walls to maybe combine their powers that'll do more damage than a broadside but I've never personally loved the wall dynamo or wall dart so again I play lots of 160s without jailing and I've never seriously needed these traps if you're confused about the zapple max that's one of the new things as well it's an exact reskin of the wall dynamo it's basically just the um, the starter pack one I think it's available as of recording this but that won't be true in the future that is available with the machinist mina pack and it's basically a reskin of the wall dynamo it's the exact same thing now after recording that bit i did realize that wall spikes exist they are a very different kind of wall trap so they basically reflect damage back against the uh, zombie that's attacking it that's pretty good when paired with like frost king or the the ice king hero where the enemies freeze themselves while they're attacking the wall spikes it's a good trap but again nothing i've ever needed but it can be pretty fun if you know how to use it now, let's move on to the non-damaging wall traps, which I personally will say are the most interesting traps in the game. The sound wall is really, really good for, I used to just say, making propanes drop, but in recent tunnels, I just started placing these very recently, and I found that they were really good at, like, stunning smashers and, you know, preventing them from moving forward and just knocking other enemies in place. It might have been other traps taking that effect, but the main purpose of the sound wall is to make propanes drop so they don't blow up your tunnel. It's very, very useful and very nice to have, so I 
I highly recommend keeping a few of these on board. Uh, wall launchers are probably my most used wall trap on top of broadsides. I'm not even kidding. Wall launchers, this is again just going to be a nice little callback to my trap video. I probably should have plugged this earlier in the video, linked below to that, of course, where I show how to use some of these traps to the most effectiveness. And wall launchers are very good for sending enemies back through the tunnels you've already built or off the side of the map or into a death pit and can be very, very effective. I probably use wall launchers in every single mission. While lights are, in my opinion, kind of like a budget floor freeze, and I say budget because I don't actually know how much they cost, but it's less effective in one regard, and that floor freeze can freeze an enemy in place, just like the wall lights, but they also take more damage from floor freeze. That doesn't happen with a wall light, so wall lights can be really nice to put at like the edge of a cliff or anywhere where you have floor traps that are doing something else other than you know being able to place a floor freeze, so that can be nice in certain situations, but once I've uh, kind of turned myself on to the floor freeze traps, I I have completely stopped using wall lights even though they are very effective for stunning enemies in place i also show effective ways to use them in my trap video down below all right we're done with ceiling traps and wall traps i mentioned this was going to be kind of a quick video didn't i well we haven't gotten to the floor traps yet right now i want to talk about the flame girl trap just recycle it it's useless but the cozy campfire and the healing pads are very very useful i actually use some supercharged healing pads somebody gave me these a long time ago and i'm still working through the one stack uh this gives you about 400,000 health and a full party of people who are like capable of beating the storm king so maybe you can scale that number down to like maybe whatever your power level is but but healing pads are quite expensive, but are very, very useful at healing you instantly. I prefer campfires in normal missions. They are extremely cheap to craft. Placing a couple of these at once are a great way to heal you over time. You cannot heal from more than two of these at a time, unfortunately. You used to be able to spam like 16 of these and you'd essentially be invincible. Uh, that is not how these function anymore, but they are great if you're just trying to heal yourself and your teammates. I believe this also affects defenders, so if your defenders are taking a lot of heat, uh, throw down a cozy campfire. However, if they are taking heat, it's probably because you didn't use enough anti-air traps. This is one of the traps that definitely got an upgrade because what used to happen and this is why i have my purple one leveled up is that traps were cheaper when you crafted them at a lower rarity uh which is uh, not the case anymore in fact that's why i always use blue floor spikes because it was just one duct tape instead of two and i preferred that and i never recommended using anything higher than blue because you don't need the damage and i still use my blue uh, floor spikes for that exact same reason however uh, it is no longer more expensive to craft a gold one and that is the exact same with the uh the, the anti-air trap and every other trap in the entire game and that is one of the major changes for this video and i'm kind of glad that it happened somewhat recently because i would have recorded this video weeks ago and then i would have had to like pin a comment speaking of which if anything changes in the future check the pin comment down below that's usually where i put any updates so yeah anti-air trap you can absolutely make it legendary now and it's a very 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 good trap it can hit the uh, lobber zombies then do some damage to those it'll take out the lobber projectiles and can be really really nice against pitchers it'll take out a thrown propane it'll no longer affect uh, explosive death bombs when they drop on the ground and propanes no longer drop their propane so a couple of minor tweaks since my last video but anti-air traps are still something you want to use in every single mission now i already mentioned the floor freeze i think fairly well but this is a very very good trap i would say in terms of like giving cadence to the to the support traps of the game this might be in my opinion the best trap in the game simply because it's kind of a caveat like no it's not technically doing any damage unless a wall launcher hits a zombie that's frozen that's a current bug but it actually makes all of your other traps stronger everything just d just does 20 percent more damage which is really really nice to have and i put these on the floors of pretty much every single trap tunnel because of that and it is a, a fantastic pick for the late game now the tar pit while being very similar to the floor freeze uh it serves a very very different purpose the tar pit is really good at trapping zombies in a single spot this will stop a smasher mid charge uh so will a floor freeze technically but if a smasher gets frozen by a floor freeze it'll just continue running afterwards that's not what you want tar pit will completely cancel that charge and essentially reset the smasher which is very very effective this also affects mini bosses so i always put my tar pits at the end of a tunnel you don't want to put these all throughout a tunnel it'll work but the durability goes down with every single zombie that's good that gets stuck on it that's why i have all five durability perks on it and i'm only getting to 74 now i think i have survivor squads that'll kick in if i uh, queue into a mission but it's still not going to be enough to last the entire mission so you want to use these sparingly as kind of a last resort to stop smashers and mini bosses and in those cases tar pits are very very nice so if you're ever getting overrun by smashers have somebody throw down some tar pits and you'll be very very happy you did now, a couple of the final traps that I just sort of want to go over are honestly like retractable floor spikes don't do enough damage to be viable. In my opinion, floor launchers are redundant. I have never found a situation where floor launchers are doing something that a wall launcher can't, but these can be useful. So if you know how to use them, they are a thing, but they don't really throw smashers super high into the air anymore. So that's not really a thing I can count on them for. So 
I've just not really, you know, these 106 floor launchers have always been me saying, okay, if these ever become useful, I'll make them 130. And like I said, I'd run a lot of high-end missions without any uh, any any jailing, and I, I've just never needed these. And uh, let's actually talk about the fun traps down here. I don't ever bring these up, uh, but I should have in my previous, previous video. Boost pads are super fun. They're not really for anything serious. Player jump pads can get you up really high, which is nice. I just jump on cones. It's not a big deal. What I want to talk about is the low-key best mobile in the entire game of Save the World. If you place the directional jump pads properly, you can get across the entire map with like four or five of these. I use these in encampment missions when we need to get around fast, and especially in ventures when you don't have a Baron, these can get you going very, very quickly. Essentially what happens is if you just launch yourself, you go a certain distance. If you launch yourself again, it boosts it, I think by a percent on top of itself, and it compounds. So you can go further and further with every single jump if you can time it right. And a nice little trick to go a little bit further is to jump just as you step onto this thing and then get lunged by it you go a little bit further but i think it's a little tricky to do that it's just a thing that you can do and it's uh very very effective not to mention these things are two nuts and bolts in one plank a piece so i almost always just have a stack of these on me they are extremely cheap and uh, you want to spam them around as much as possible if you're going across the entire map like in the uh, encampments mission i mentioned uh, you'll actually be able to use lots of those more than once and of course your teammates can use them as well which makes everybody faster and makes the whole mission a lot easier but that's it. I'm surprised that such a such a pivotal part of the game is such a short video, but those are the best traps in Save the World. I would love to see some more traps added to the game. If I was ever going to want to remake a video, it would be because they added more traps, but there's nothing left to talk about, you guys. I covered them all. So traps are a huge, important part of the game. Link to my video down below, again, on how to use traps to their most effectiveness. If you guys enjoyed this video and you guys want to see more, feel free to subscribe. Use code MISTA at your checkout. It definitely helps support me and continue making these. Follow my Twitch link in the description below. You can, get, you can hang out with me on there. Thank you guys so much for watching and uh, have a nice day. <laughs> oh my god. The death was so instant. <laughs> and then